Hi, and welcome to this Latino Ministry for Christ channel. Before we proceed to the reflection you have come to see, I want to invite you to subscribe to the channel, to activate the bell, to give us a like, to share this video, and to leave your comments. This will allow the algorithms to promote the reflections so that more people may be reached with the gospel. God bless you. In the reflection for today, who redeems your life from the pit. Fanny Crosby, the blind hymn writer who lost her sight from an eye infection and due to medical negligence at the age of six weeks, wrote so many well-known hymns for the Christian church. Crosby wrote between 5,500 and 9,000 hymns. Some of the best known of her hymns included Safe in the Arms of Jesus, Rescue the Perishing, Blessed Assurance, The Bright Forever, Savior More Than Life to Me, and Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. On Mrs. Crosby's birthday, she visited the Macaulay Rescue Mission in New York. She stood in front of a crowd of homeless men, drug addicts, and alcoholics and said, is there a young man here who doesn't have a mother? One young man timidly raised his hand. He explained that his mother died when he was very young. Fanny Crosby asked the young man to come to the front. She gave him a big hug and kissed him on the cheek. It touched her heart so much that she went home that night and wrote these words, Rescue the perishing care for the dying, snatch them in pity from sin and the grave, weep over the erring one, lift up the fallen, tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Years later, Ira Sankey was singing in front of Dwight Lyman Moody in St. Louis, Missouri. Moody rose to sing that song, but before he sang, he told that story. As he told the story, a middle-aged man jumped up and shouted, It was me. I am the young man she wrote about. She kissed me. I could never get away from that moment. As a result of that simple kiss, a young man sunk in the abyss of addictions came to Christ and his whole life changed. In the love of Jesus, his life was rescued from the pit of perdition. For today's reflection, we read from the beautiful Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Psalm 103 verses 1 to 5. This is a well-known psalm in the Christian world and has been used to sing praises of worship. Although these verses can be broken down to speak individually about each blessing received from the Lord, this day we will focus on talking about who rescues your life from the pit. But we will briefly mention each one of them, and it is very likely that in future reflections we will talk about each one of them separately. It is time for creation to declare praise to the Creator of all things, especially you and I, 
who are recipients of such divine promises. The background of Psalm 103 is not clear, but what is clear is David's desire to praise God for all he has done. It speaks of God's personal blessings, of His merciful love, and ends with a universal call to all believers to praise the Lord. David called his soul and all that is in him to bless the Lord. The Lord blesses us, but how can we bless Him? In this context, the term bless means to praise Him with great affection, calling on his soul and all that is within him to praise the Lord. David summoned his soul, mind, strength, and heart to praise the One who reigns over heaven and earth. He invites us to raise our eyes and see the wonders that God perform for the love of those who seek Him and honor His name. One thing is certain, and that is that we cannot appreciate God unless we have a knowledge of His greatness, His majesty in creation, His wisdom in providential care, and His redeeming love, demonstrated through the gift of His Son. Jesus Christ. But if we only have a knowledge of God's love, a knowledge of His greatness, mercy, compassion, and His willingness to forgive and redeem, but we do not see ourselves correctly in the mirror of His Word, then we will not have a real appreciation of the Lord, nor we will know how to live for Him as we should. One of the human inclinations is often to forget and stop being grateful for some good that we receive from someone. That is the human tendency when it comes to receiving a good from someone else. But on the contrary, if we do some good to someone, we want to be recognized as many times as necessary in front of others, right? Then how is it possible that we do not have in mind all the benefits we are receiving from the goodness and love of the Creator? How is it possible that in the moments in which we must remain faithful to Him, we forget the sacrifice and martyrdom of Jesus on the cross? That is why David says to his soul, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Verses 1 and 2. What he is telling us is that we cannot be ungrateful and unappreciative to the show of love capable of giving His Son to be tortured, martyred, and crucified to rescue your soul and mine. In the New Testament, the Gospel of Matthew tells us, Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 to 38. Verse 4 of today's passage tells us, who rescue your life from the pit. The word for redeeming or rescuing is ga'al, which means to act as a close relative, to recover from death, slavery, or as a prisoner of war in battle. God not only forgives and forgets, but actively rescues us from bondage, slavery, prison, and death. God pays a price for us in our sins. That redemption price is none other than Jesus Christ. Jesus paid the price with His death on the cross so that our sins could be forgiven and we could be rescued from the bondage of sin into a loving relationship with God. But what is the pit or what does it represent? The Hebrew word used is shashat, meaning corruption and destruction related to a grave or a pit. To be redeemed from the pit then means to be saved from death and the grave. 
Theologically, we could say that it means to be saved from the abyss of hell, that is, the second death. Once again, David touches on an area that modern man wants nothing to do with it, the doctrine of hell. People commonly believe in a heaven, but are against the idea of hell or think that this is reserved only for very bad people like Hitler, demons, fallen angels, and Satan himself. But it seems to me that David's assumption is that aside from God redeeming us, we are all headed hopelessly without Christ into the abyss of destruction. We need to understand and preach that all men are led to the abyss of hell unless are redeemed by the grace of God, exclusively through the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ his Son, the key that breaks our destiny of death. Falling into the pit is a reference that we can expand on a little more. It is not a difficult concept to understand. The human condition without divine guidance leads the human being to fall deep into pits of filth, pits of all kinds and dimensions, pits of addiction, pits of depravity, pits of immorality, pits of evil, pits of promiscuity, pits of bad intentions, pits of soul-eating envy, and pits of unbelief. We could make the list quite long. This great psalm of praise lists the multiple blessings and eternal benefits that the Creator has showered in great abundance on the children of men and the people of Israel. Our life has been redeemed from the pit of the dead. Because not only we are forgiven of our sins and beneficiaries of eternal life thanks to the grace through faith in Jesus Christ, but part of that free gift of grace was to redeem us, to save us from the pit of destruction, which was prepared for the devil and his angels and from the eternal separation from our heavenly King. The book of Revelation is one of the books that most Christians today prefer to ignore or not read because of the things that are described there about the end times. The book of Revelation tells us, And the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who did mighty miracles on behalf of the beast, miracles that deceive all who had accepted the mark of the beast and who worship his statue. Both the beast and his false prophets were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. Revelations chapter 19 and verse 20. It also adds, Then the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur, joining the beast and the false prophet. There they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelations chapter 20 and verse 10. And finally, the book warned us, But cowards, unbelievers, the corrupt, murderers, the immoral, those who practice witchcraft, idol worshippers, and liars, their fate is in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Revelation chapter 21 and verse 8. Do you understand now why is it that He redeems your life from the pit? He rescues us not only from the claws of death through the resurrection of the dead, but He also rescues us from being hopelessly thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur that is destined for Satan, the false prophet, the beast, the host of fallen angels, and for everyone who today rejects his redemption through the divine blood of Jesus. Psalm 103 also reminds us that with this great rescue, the Lord crowns us with steadfast love and mercy, as the verses tell us, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles, 
verses 3 and 5. My dear friend and brother, David's feeling in writing Psalm 103 should be alive in our minds and hearts. The Lord is faithful to His Word in promising us such a great salvation. I want you to think about this. It all depends on what you decide to do today. You can summon your soul to bless, to thank and praise the God of all mercy, or keep postponing your decision knowing that today could be the last chance you have in your life, since tomorrow is not guaranteed to us. Our Heavenly Father, your name is worthy of all praise and glory, because you forgive all of our sins and heal all of our diseases and illnesses. You have redeemed us from death. You have crowned us with your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Fill our lives with good things that please you, because great is your faithfulness, and all praise be given to your holy name. Through Christ Jesus, your Son, we declare it from the depth of our soul. Amen.